I would like to now invite our next speaker from DLC Global Innovation and Design Thinking Committee, Mr. Paul Sandeep, founder, chief designer of Paul Studio, two-time winner of the prestigious Red Dot Design Award, recipient of the Designpreneur title from Sri Narendra Modi, three times TEDx speaker, notable alumni of the prestigious NID Ahmedabad. So can I please welcome Mr. Paul? Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a good time. And Jimmy, thank you for inviting me. Can we uh, start the presentation, please? I'm going to talk about innovation by observation. Uh, something, it might uh, sound a bit silly, but that how do you actually innovate just by observing your everyday life? But, uh, well, I'm an industrial designer, and uh, I'm a designer of everyday objects. And I've been practicing design thinking for the past uh, two decades now. And I've been fortunate enough to create more than 700 products for my clients worldwide by using a very, very simple technique of observation. So when I'm talking about observation, so what is, what is the key element which I want to emphasize? It is look, don't see. What happens to us on a daily basis is that we might walk to office in the same route, but we don't really look at things closely. We tend to overlook things. We just see things as they are, but don't question that why they are the way they are. This is a very common sight. We all probably have used this sometime, the cloth pegs, simple, humble products. What do you observe here? The product is actually, could be of various materials. It could be in metal, it could be in plastic, it could be in wood. But how often do we actually see a problem while using this product. Most of the times, we don't. And the reason is something called habituation, which stops us from thinking that as if this is a problem. So how do we deal with this? And how did I deal with this to create a product? It was simple. The observation was here that a clip is comprised of two materials, a metal spring and a plastic body. What happens to the spring is that it leaves rust marks on your clothes. And the plastic peg tends to break off because it becomes brittle lying out in the sun. So what I did was very simple. I removed the metal spring and created a monolithic design. So it has two jaws. So even if one jaw breaks up, the other is still alive and you can still use the product. And it also helps recycle the product because it is easy to retrieve because it doesn't have two materials and it's only monolithic. It's a simple observation and a simple product which won me one of the most prestigious uh, German design awards, the Red Dot. Again, when we talk about really observation, there's something called facts and something called insights. So how do you actually you know, translate a fact into an insight? A, a simple fact, like many urban homes in India still do not have 24 hours water supply. And hence, we use buckets to store water in our bathrooms. And what is the insight over here? Since buckets occupy space in the bathroom, what happens is that water gets stuck inside, uh, below the bottom of the uh, bucket. And it starts leaving marks on the floor. And also, your bathroom stays wet. This is a uh, photograph from uh, a home visit. And this is the observation that this is the way a regular middle-class family would actually stock up water in their bathroom. And this leaves it, the space messy. So from there, I took an inspiration that our feet is actually designed in a manner that it allows water beneath it. If you look, if you look closely to your feet, you'll observe that there's a curved, curved surface and it actually allows the water to flow beneath it. So th then I was struck with an idea of a dry feet. Can I create a bucket with a dry feet so that the water beneath it will actually drain out easily and leave your floor dry? And this was launched along with the entire collection 
It was called the Fluor Bathroom Essentials, the mug, the basin, and the uh, bucket. A simple solution to a, solu a problem which no one was actually looking at, but this became a unique selling point for the brand. I always say that you see things if you're looking for it. For example, I happened to you know, visit the kitchen uh, in, a, in a restaurant and I noticed something. If you look closely at the uh, railing behind the chef, you'll notice the vertically placed switch plates. Now imagine a situation where you're actually trying to cook up something and uh, you don't know how, which way is on or which way is off. Because we are, we are actually used to using switch plates in a, in a horizontal manner. So we know this way is on and this way is off. But imagine if it is vertically placed, you really are clueless which way is on and which way is off. And that's, that is something I feel that creates a mental stress. So how did I uh, change the status quo? It's something very simple. I observed was that the regular switch plates which were available in the market, the socket was actually square, 45 by 42. What I did was very simple. I changed the socket size from rectangular to square. So what happens is that if it's square, you can rotate it in any degree and it will still remain the same. So if you see this image, now the switch plate is actually vertical as well as horizontal, but the orientation of the switches are still vertical and it doesn't cause any stress anymore. It, is, it has become a norm in the trade now and many, many brands have adopted this concept. Uh, seeing the invisible, well, something interesting, like you can solve a problem when you see it, but what if you really can't see a problem? Now, how do you solve it? I'll share another interesting example. Now, this is a regular multi-plug and a two-pin plug, which probably we would have used and we keep use, using on an everyday basis. I observed something very nagging happening to this product. The two-pin plug tends to fall off. And I really didn't know that, how do I solve this? And this was a nagging problem. And then I realized some, one day that it was actually gravity which was the problem. And the plug was falling off due to gravity. So what did I do next? I changed the angle of the plug from flat to an angle. And I created the angular multi-plug. So now, while gravity was letting the uh, plug fall off, the same gravity is not being able to pull it off because of the angle. And it's a gravity lock which I had created. And it's been really selling well for the past 15 uh, years. And you, you can buy this on Amazon. It's one of the best sellers in the category. Thank you.